right, so here's the deal. A couple of months back, I made one of those Iceberg Explained videos, and it was extremely popular, and people were asking, no, begging me to make another one. So here I am, making an iceberg on America's favorite adult-oriented programming block, Adult Swim. If you're new to my channel, I'm Dan Tavius. How you doing? And if you're unfamiliar with what an iceberg chart is, it's basically a way to sort information from the least known to the most known. Or wait, no, the other way around, from most known to least known. Yeah, that's right. Anyways, let's not waste time with this pointless intro and let's jump into this pointless video. Oh, and by the way, I'm gonna be picking one lucky person from the comments to win a- So before we actually delve into the iceberg, let's do a quick vocabulary lesson. You're gonna hear me using the term bump or bumper a lot, and that's just referring to those transitions that Adult Swim would have before and after commercial breaks, kind of like what I did at the beginning of this video. Now that that's out of the way, let's actually start. Okay, one last thing and we'll get started, I promise. I wanna give a big shout out to Wilfred Cthulhu who created this iceberg chart and helped me out a little bit. He has videos on every layer of the iceberg on his page, so go check it out. Too Many Cooks was a 15 minute long sketch that appeared on Adult Swim Swim's infomercial programming block. This was the block at 4 a.m. before Adult Swim ended where they would show a bunch of weird shit. It starts off as a parody of old sitcom title sequences, you know, where they introduce the characters to upbeat music, but then a serial killer starts murdering all of the people as they're being introduced, and the genre switches from old sitcom to soap operas, and then a police drama, and even a sci-fi Star Trek type show where the serial killer turns into a giant spaceship. It's all very surreal and meta and uh, avant-garde, which is a word I just learned five minutes ago by the way. The skit went viral back in the day and today it's sitting on 21 million views. Seth Rogen's phone number. Eric Andre supposedly gave away Seth Rogen's actual phone number on an episode of the Eric Andre show. That's it. Unedited footage of a bear. This is another infomercial skit. It starts off as the title suggests with unedited footage of a bear, but after about 12 seconds a fake ad for allergy medicine comes up, and similar to Too Many Cooks, it spirals into an insane horror movie. I'm not gonna get too much into it, alright? If you wanna go watch it, go watch it. I got fucking eight more entries on this layer, so come on, let's keep it moving. Boston Moon and Night Panic. This refers to an event back in 2007 in which a bunch of fucking schlemiels mistook LED lights of a cartoon character for improvised explosives. That's right, the entire city of Boston was shut down because of a marketing campaign for Aqua Teen Hunger Force. To build hype for the upcoming Aqua Teen movie, a bunch of these LED displays of Moon and Nights were installed around major cities including Boston. If you're wondering what a Moon and Night is, I'll have Fox News' Shep Smith explain it for you. So what is this little light bright looking character thing seen flipping the bird at all eyes which fall upon it. He's a Moonanite, of course, in Turner Broadcasting Cartoon Network's late night block of programs for grown-ups called Adult Swim. The show is Aqua Teen Hunger Force. Moonanites hail from the center of the moon, obviously. They're a race of pixelated aliens from the inner core of Earth's satellite represented here by Ur and Ignanot. Cartoon Network was forced to pay two million dollars in damages and Adult Swim's general manager would step down a week after the incident. So yeah, at the end of the day, uh, it was a pretty successful marketing campaign if you ask me. All Kids Out of the Pool refers to Adult Swim's original bumps, which consisted of old people swimming and some guy in the background yelling, ALL KIDS OUT OF THE POOL! All Kids Out of the Pool for Adult Swim. All Kids Out for Adult Swim. Toonami's back, bitches. So Toonami was a programming block that came on before Adult Swim and it mostly played anime. I mean, let's be honest, if you're a male born in the 90s, you know exactly what Toonami is. And you probably know that it was canceled in 2008, but then in 2012 it was brought back as a part of Adult Swim. That's it. It's really not that deep. I mean, come on, we're not even in the water yet. The Dawn Is Your Enemy is a bump that showed up at the end of Adult Swim before regular Cartoon Network programming would start. Honestly, I can't remember ever seeing this when I was a kid and I stayed up all night a lot. But then again, I was huffing a lot of glue back then so I might've just lost my memory. But anyways, I'm not gonna get too far into this one now because it's gonna come up again later. All right, so that was the first layer. We're still in the sky, nothing too crazy. Let's move down to the tip. <laughs> <laughs> Space Ghost Coast to Coast and The Brack Show aired before Adult Swim. All this is saying is that Space Ghost Coast to Coast and its spin-off The Brack Show aired on Cartoon Network before Adult Swim even existed. But once Adult Swim was created, they became part of its lineup on day one. A lot of people think that Space Ghost Coast to Coast was an Adult Swim original, but that's simply not the case. The true Kraft Punk. So Kraft Punk is a character on The Eric Andre Show. There's been a lot of speculation on who's actually in that costume. Some people think it's Eric Andre, 
Some people think it's, you know, another person. My personal opinion, uh, who gives a shit? Next, 4 a.m. 4 a.m. is when Adult Swim plays its weird, creepy, and unsettling shit. This is when too many cooks and unedited footage of a bear premiered. Joe Para Grocery Store Food List 1945.com. Now, before I get into this one, I should explain who Joe Para is. Joe Para has a show on Adult Swim called Joe Para Talks With You, and in one of the episodes, he went to the grocery store. Just go to Joe Para Grocery Store Food List 1945.com. Leave a comment on something you think I'd enjoy. So if you go to the website Joe Para Grocery Store Food List 1945.com, you'll be redirected to this URL, which is just a basic HTML grocery list, and you can add more items, and then there's a link to Joe Para's page on Adult Swim website. It's nothing too crazy, it's just like a fun little Easter egg. Saints Row 3 radio stations. So in the game Saints Row 3, one of the radio stations played exclusively music from Adult Swim, and it was even hosted by John, the main character from Adult Swim's Delocated. You're listening to WDD. TCPDG, The Swim. I'm John from Delocated. Waiting for the next season of Blank. So all this is referring to is that sometimes there's large breaks in between seasons of a lot of Adult Swim shows. Like there was three years between seasons five and six of The Venture Brothers, and there was four years between Eric Andre's shows fifth and sixth seasons. Carl in GTA 5. So there's an Easter egg in Grand Theft Auto 5 where Carl from Aqua Teen Hunger Force calls into one of the radio stations. It's actually pretty freaking hilarious. <laughs> Yeah, I'm calling to request uh, any music that ain't this. Stop playing everything you've been playing because your music sounds like a dumpster rolling down five flights of stairs. Dexter's Rude Removal. Rude Removal was an episode of Dexter's Laboratory where Dexter split himself and Dee Dee up into two separate copies. One pair of copies was rude and the other pair was polite. This episode was banned because of all the bleeped out cursing. Hey, where's the f candy? Where you're throwing that? This episode was made in 1997, but wouldn't see the light of day until 2013 when it was released on Adult Swim. I remember this being kind of like an urban legend. Nobody knew if it really existed or not. But then again, that might be a false memory, because like I said, I was doing a lot of nitrous oxide back then. Adventure Time airings. So Adult Swim aired reruns of Adventure Time for a few weeks, and it must have not done well, because they took that shit down quick. Which makes sense, because it doesn't really match the rest of their content. Alright, so we made it past the tip. And we're finally in the water. This is where the real juicy stuff starts. Eric Andre show behind the scenes. So this is referring to all the crazy things Eric Andre would do to torture his guests and to keep them from finding out that they were about to get tortured. Because, you know, the magic behind the Eric Andre show is that people don't know what they're getting themselves into. And at first, it was really easy to fool people into thinking they were going on a regular talk show because nobody knew who he was. But then he had to do like more and more intricate things in order to keep the truth away from these people that he wanted to come onto his show. Like for example, he would make fake footage of him interviewing people as if it was a normal talk show and he would send that to people's managers and bookers and stuff. So they would just think it was a regular talk show, but then obviously, you know, they came on and it was the Eric Andre show. <laughs> And aside from the things that we actually get to see, like when Eric unleashed rats on unsuspecting guests or when he would throw up on his own desk, there's so much stuff that happens behind the scenes that we don't get to see. Like for example, in the T.I. episode, there was just a naked guy standing behind the camera and that's why T.I. got so pissed off and wanted to walk off. But other than that, he would turn the heat up in the studio all the way, even in the middle of summer, which is why a lot of the guests look so sweaty, and he stopped bathing the entirety of season three. A couple of the guests make offhanded comments about his stench but yeah man there's just so many things like that even when people were familiar with the show he still had to figure out ways to torture them like when jack black came on he hooked him up to a lie detector except there wasn't a lie detector at all it just kept shocking him every time he would lie or tell the truth what did you have for lunch today i had sushi ah son of a bitch it yeah. shocked me this is shocking me when i tell the truth oh. now I'm Eric talks about this stuff in multiple interviews, so if you want to know more, just watch those. Contact Ghost Planet. At the end of each episode of Space Ghost Coast to Coast, there would be a message saying contact Ghost Planet with some contact information. I tried calling one of these numbers and some dude Ron picked up and said he's tired of these stupid ass kids calling his phone all the time. Chill out, Ron. 
revived Futurama and Family Guy. So Futurama and Family Guy were both shows on Fox. Family Guy got canceled after season three and Adult Swim picked up the syndication for next to nothing and it became the most popular show on Adult Swim. Then the big wigs at Fox were like, hey, uh, wait a second here, maybe we were wrong. Let's try this thing out again. And it got renewed for a fourth season and I'm pretty sure they're still making new episodes even today. A similar thing happened with Futurama. It got canceled on Fox but became extremely popular from the Adult Swim reruns and that led to it getting four movies made on Comedy Central and even getting rebooted a few years later. I don't know about you guys, but I've never seen these shows on Fox. I've only ever seen them on Adult Swim. Amazing art style versus crap art style. So this is referring to the fact that Adult Swim shows either have an amazing art style like Black Dynamite and the Boondocks or a crap art style like Home Movies and Squid Billies. But this one doesn't really make too much sense to me because there's plenty of shows that are in between. Like I would say Rick and Morty and the Oblongs are in between, so... I don't know. Aqua Teen Hunger Force Space Ghost Coast to Coast Designs. So believe it or not, the Aqua Teen Hunger Force actually made their debut on Space Ghost Coast to Coast in the episode Baffler Meal. Aqua Teen Hunger Force, assemble! Frylock, the hunger hater, tater. Meat rod, ball of compressed meat. The burn is in your mind. And together we are Aqua Teen Hunger Force. As you can see, their original designs and personalities were completely different, except for Meatwad. Adult Swim technically owns American Dad. Okay, so American Dad premiered on Fox. It was then bought by TBS. TBS is owned by Turner, which also owns Cartoon Network and Adult Swim. That's why new episodes of American Dad play on Adult Swim a few days after premiering on TBS. Therefore, by the transatlantic property, Adult Swim owns American Dad. Black Dynamite Juxtapose cover. So I'm going to be 100% honest, I have never heard of Juxtapose magazine in my life, but apparently it's a culture and lifestyle magazine that was really popular in the 2010s. On July 12, 2012, they had this really cool cover featuring Black Dynamite, and you know, it's a shame the show didn't live up to the hype of this cover, because it only lasted two seasons and it was not very popular. Gaining fondness of anime from Adult Swim. So for most of us, our first experience with anime was from watching Adult Swim. Personally, I'm not a big anime fan, but I'll tell you what, I used to watch the shit out of Dragon Ball Z and Naruto when it was on Adult Swim and Toonami. I honestly don't think anime would be this popular in America if it wasn't for Adult Swim, because it gave you that little taste while your brain was still developing, you know? So you know what? I blame Adult Swim for modern day American weeb culture. Fuck you, Adult Swim. Hanna-Barbera assets in other shows. So a lot of people know that Space Ghost Coast to Coast is based on a 1960s superhero show, Space Ghost, and it reuses assets and footage from that show. But what a lot of people don't know is that there's a lot of other shows that reuse assets from old Hanna-Barbera stuff. For example, C-Lab 2021 is based on the 1970s show, C-Lab 2020. And I'm pretty sure Aqua Teen Hunger Force also reuses old backgrounds from Hanna-Barbera. Aqua Teen Hunger Force made up pilot to be aired. So Aqua Teen Hunger Force actually premiered a whole year before Adult Swim even existed. They played the episode one time and they didn't do any promo or announce it at all. This is what's referred to as a stealth pilot. Anyways, when it actually premiered on Adult Swim, they actually started with episode two. In the original pilot, the concept of the show was that the Aqua Team Hunger Force solved and investigated crimes for money. But after a few episodes, they stopped doing that completely. And the in-show reason was that they weren't making enough money from doing that. This is because Cartoon Network executives didn't want to air a show about food going around doing random things. So the guys who created Aqua Teen made up a fake pilot so the show would get greenlit and eventually after a few episodes they would start doing what they actually wanted to do with the show. Man, I don't know why but this story just brings joy to my heart. This house has people in it rabbit hole. So this house has people in it is another weird ass 15 minute long skit similar to too many cooks or unedited footage of a bear. The concept is that we're viewing a home security system and seeing footage from different rooms in the house. The family that lives in the house isn't doing anything particularly interesting. They're just talking about normal suburban white people shit. But of course this is Adult Swim so it progressively gets weirder and weirder. Like for some reason everybody's eating clay and the daughter literally starts sinking into the ground. Like she goes through the floor slowly while her family freaks out. But you know what? I'm not gonna get too deep into it. If you wanna see for yourself, just watch it. The rabbit hole part comes from the fact that there's a lot to unpack in this video. There's an explanation video about the 15 minute long skit that's an hour and a half long and it has more views than the original video. So I was not joking when I said there's a lot to unpack. There's a ton of easter eggs and like hidden things throughout the video. For example, at the end of the video there's a URL for a website. If you go to that website and say forgot password, it'll auto generate an email. Press send and you'll receive a reply with the username and password. Once you actually get in there, there's a bunch of stuff you can see, like there's these logs. I don't really know what they are, but there's also archives, which is just recordings that add to the background of the video. 
Hey. Are you okay? I can't hear anything you're saying. I, I literally can't hear anything you're saying. I can hear that, that you're someone's on the other end of the line, but I can't hear. Oh, a character in my book died. I'm sorry. I can't. I literally can't hear what you're Honey. saying. Honey. Hey, I can hear that. Honey. Okay. Yeah, that's only a taste of what's out there. There's a ton of additional videos that supplement the original skit. If you want to learn more about this, go watch Nightmind's hour and a half long video about this. Let's move on. Season 4 of The Boondocks never happened. So originally The Boondocks was supposed to end after Season 3, except Adult Swim wanted to make a fourth season. Only thing is, the series creator, Aaron Magruder, wasn't involved with it at all. So naturally, it was shit. It's kind of like the gas leak season in Community. Some people don't even consider that part of the show. And I think it's so far down the list because a lot of people didn't even know there was a fourth season of The Boondocks. I didn't know. Rick and Morty ended after season two. This is a similar situation. People don't like seasons three to five of Rick and Morty. So they like to pretend as if they don't exist. Simple as that. Space Ghost Coast to Coast interview process. So Space Ghost Coast to Coast didn't have a traditional interview process where they would ask a question and then get an answer from the celebrity and just air all of that. They would ask the celebrity a question, but then in the actual show they would edit in Space Ghost asking a completely different question which made the celebrity look crazy. This is fucking hilarious and I'm really sad I didn't give Space Ghost a try when I was a kid. Pee Wee's Playhouse. I am surprised that more people don't remember that Pee Wee's Playhouse house was on Adult Swim. I remember seeing it a few times as a kid and it terrified me. Like nothing Adult Swim can make comes close to how creepy this show was, man. <laughs> All right, four layers down, we are deep in this biatch. Let's start with Boo Boo Runs Wild. This was a parody of Yogi Bear in which Boo Boo goes crazy and then Ranger John tries to shoot Boo Boo and then him and Yogi end up beating the shit out of each other. Adult Swim airs it every few years Ranger Randomly. I'm sorry, Yogi. I'm afraid I'm going to have to do my duty. Falcon Bunch Pumper. Wait, no, that's not right. Falcon Punch Bumper. So the guy who made this iceberg chart swears he saw a Falcon Punch Bumper on Adult Swim, but I haven't been able to find anything about this anywhere on the internet. And I spent hours, I stayed up whole nights researching, trying to find it. I'm kidding, I looked for like 10 minutes before giving up. But yeah, the guy says he saw it, I trust him. It might be some Mandela Effect bullshit, but who knows, let's move on. 1966 Space Ghost added laugh track. So back when Space Ghost Coast to Coast first premiered, they would sometimes follow up episodes with episodes from the original Space Ghost show from the 1960s, except they added a laugh track on top of it. Staying up late to watch Full Metal Alchemist. This is referring to the fact that some people would stay up late to watch Full Metal Alchemist. Randomly discovering FLCL. So FLCL, or Fooly Cooly, is a six episode anime series that would premiere randomly on Adult Swim. Not a lot of people have seen it, but it has a cult following. And I just want to say, I keep seeing this cool and unique stuff that's popping up on this iceberg chart. And I spent a lot of time watching Adult Swim when I was a kid. Like I would spend weeks upon weeks during my summer vacations watching Adult Swim all night. And I haven't seen any of this cool shit, man. The only weird thing I saw was Pee Wee's Playhouse. Whatever, let's just move on. Unnerving bumpers. So we've already talked about the Don Is Your Enemy and Clark, but there's so many other unsettling bumpers that are more obscure. Like take this one, for example, that I found while I was researching for this video. It's called Facelift. <laughs> Let's move on. Pitches of shows that ended up on Cartoon Network. This is referring to the fact that some shows were pitched to Adult Swim, but were rejected and ended up on Cartoon Network. The Problem Solvers and Class of 3000 are two examples of this. I mean, the Problem Solvers animation style looks like a straight up Adult Swim show. It's also rumored that Regular Show was originally intended for Adult Swim, which kind of makes sense since it's so much different compared to other Cartoon Network shows, and it's a little bit more in line with the humor and the style of other Adult Swim shows. Aqua Teen Hunger Force ended very quickly. 
So Aqua Teen Hunger Force was an Adult Swim staple from day one, and it was one of their longest running shows. Everybody remembers watching it, but nobody remembers that it was cancelled all the way back in 2015. I don't remember anybody ever talking about this back in 2015. Apparently the show's creators wanted it to go on, but Adult Swim's president wasn't feeling it anymore. The episode titled The Last One Forever and Ever For Real This Time We Fucking Mean It was released as the series finale, but that was a lie. The real series finale, The Greatest Story Ever Told, was released online with barely any advertising. That's kind of a shitty send off for such an iconic show, but what are you gonna do? All Time and Music Eastern instantly takes you back. All Time and Music Eastern was a song that Adult Swim used for a lot of its bumps. If you don't remember, let me refresh your memory with this short clip. All right, I can't do any more than that or I'll get hit with the copyright claim. So do me a favor, pause this video and look up all times in Music Eastern so you can jog your memory or else the next part's not gonna make any sense. Go ahead, I'll wait. <laughs> Don't you just feel a shot of nostalgia straight to the groin when you hear that? Gosh, it takes me back 30 years ago, back to my high school days when I was doing whippets and trying to figure out if I was gay or not. Shared memory of watching Adult Swim in the mid 2000s. This one really isn't that deep, but most people who were born in the 90s have memories of watching Adult Swim until like 4 a.m. and a sense of euphoria and melancholy would wash over you as you would see the sun rising and you would hear your dad waking up for work as he screamed, GO TO SLEEP! you piece of shit! Ah, takes me back. Ooh, now we're getting deep. We're in the depths, man. This is where the ore fish and the vampire squid and the angler fish live. That's how deep we are in the depths. Lost April Fool's footage. Since 2004, Adult Swim has been doing April Fool's Day bumpers and skits. For example, the one from 2021 was Adult Swim Junior. Coming up later on Adult Swim Junior, Game of Setsu Machu Preschool. Another example is in 2004, this is the original April Fool's Day prank. They just aired the regular Adult Swim lineup except they had mustaches drawn on all the characters. Now the weird thing is there's a lot of footage from these pranks that have completely completely gone missing from the internet. The only footage from the original gag in 04 is this 3 second clip of Fry and Bender from Futurama with mustaches. And it isn't just the original April Fool's Day content that's missing, like most of this footage is nowhere to be found. And weirdly enough, the footage from 2013 is completely missing. If you want to learn more about this, Wilfred Cthulhu made a whole reddit post on this topic detailing what's missing from each year, so again, shout out to him. Classic Adult Swim revival run. Apparently there was a period of time where Adult Swim was playing their classic shows like Space Ghost Coast to Coast and The Brack Show on Sundays. They were also using old school bumpers from the All Kids Out of the Pool era and a lot of people seem to have forgotten about this. I sure as shit did. The only reason I even know about it is because it was on this iceberg chart but you know I trust Wilfred man. He's a, he's a stand up guy. Dawn is your enemy fan made myths and creations. So I touched upon this one in the very first layer and I said I was going to come back to it. Well here I am. Coming back to it. Aside from being disturbing, this bumper actually has a lot of creepy pasta shit surrounding it. There's a fan made video with creepy music and screaming added in the background. Oh, and also the eyes wink at you. I think I just pulled my pants. I'll be right back. False alarm, I only peed my pants. But yeah, aside from that video, there's an entire creepypasta dedicated to the bumper. I think you guys should check it out. I'm too much of a pussy to read it myself, but uh, you know, you guys go ahead. Melancholic feelings when watching Adult Swim. When I read this on the iceberg, I needed no elaboration. I knew exactly what he was talking about. When I watch Adult Swim, especially now since I've been watching a lot for research for this video, I get this feeling of what I like to call comfortable melancholy. I can't really explain what it is, but it's the same feeling I get when I listen to like 808s and Heartbreak by Kanye West. Let me know in the comments if you guys know what I'm talking about. Sunday Pants was more suited for Adult Swim. So Sunday Pants was a show that was on Cartoon Network and it premiered at 9.30 p.m. right before Adult Swim would start. Now I've never heard of this show and not a lot of other people have either because it only ran for five episodes before getting canned. Now I watched the first episode of this show and it was the weirdest shit I've ever seen. So it's a bunch of unrelated sketches that make no sense and all have a different animation style. It's basically made for stoners. I mean
mean, let, let's just be real about it. It's made for stoners. If you watch it, you'll definitely see what I'm talking about when I say it's more suitable for Adult Swim than Cartoon Network, which is probably why the show never got to air a full season. My guess is that Adult Swim wanted this show, but they didn't have enough room in their block, so they just settled to have it play on Cartoon Network as close to Adult Swim as possible, but who knows? Adult Swim is an SCP. If you don't know what an SCP is, Google that shit and get back to me. This is kind of a meme entry since SCP isn't real. Or is it? No, 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 it's not. Unless... Anyways, the melancholy feeling you get when you watch Adult Swim, combined with all their weird content, can be attributed to the fact that Adult Swim is an SCP. Except no it can't, cause SCP isn't real so I don't even know why the fuck I'm talking about this. NEXT! Rick and Morty may do to Adult Swim what Spongebob did to Nickelodeon. Now let's get one thing out of the way, I fucking love Spongebob, okay? I got bold and brash on my wall to prove it. It's also one of the most culturally relevant and influential cartoon shows of all time. Now a lot of people think Spongebob ruined Nickelodeon because they just kept milking it and milking it until there was nothing left in the proverbial teat, right? They kept putting their eggs in the Spongebob basket and all their other shows had to take a back seat. So instead of innovating and creating a new great show that would impact, you know, the cartoon medium, they just kept milking Spongebob. And now they got that shitty Patrick Star ripoff? Like, come on, man, what are you guys doing? I mean, I don't know if it's shitty, I've never seen it, but I can only assume. Anyways, people think the same thing that happened to Nickelodeon is gonna happen to a Adult Swim because of Rick and Morty. Every viewing of Adult Swim is personalized. This is where we start getting into the deep conspiracy shit. Well, I mean, I mean, not start because this is the last entry in the iceberg, but you know what I'm saying. Anyways, this is referring to the fact that a lot of people claim to have seen things on Adult Swim that very few or no other people have seen. For example, the Wilford guy who made this iceberg has multiple instances of this. He even claims he saw a bump on Adult Swim that was saying there was going to be a sneak preview of the Pirates of the Caribbean movie, but I can't find anything about that anywhere. Or the Captain Falcon bump he talked about, and there's multiple other things. You can see more occasions of this happening if you look it up on uh, DuckDuckGo or something, but not Google, because Google's suppressing it. Personally, I remember one bump in particular where the Michelin Man from Ghostbusters was selling crack to Captain Crunch. I'm kidding, I made that up, but it could be true. It could be true. Well, that was the Adult Swim Iceberg. Let me know in the comments what you guys think, and if you liked it, go ahead and give the video a like, and subscribe for more content like this, because I'm gonna be doing like two more Iceberg chart videos, I think. I'll do more if they do well, but we'll see where it goes. As always, guys, thank you for watching. Later.